Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, you're going to learn that how you can download an image from a network, from a URL using SwiftUI. Now, one of the first things that you will realize in SwiftUI is that if you try to use the image component or the image view, it doesn't really contain any overload function where you can pass in the URL. You can pass in the name, you can pass in the system, uh, name or the system image and UI image and so on, but there's no way for you to pass in a URL to an image that you found on the internet. So you have to create that particular view yourself. So let me go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and add a new file and I'm going to search for a surf UI and create a new component, new view. I'm going to call this the URL image. Now this particular lecture is a little bit long, so maybe you should go and grab a cup of coffee if you want to. And the other thing that I want to point out is that in this lecture, I'm not really going to cover that how you can cache the images. We are simply going to see that how we can download the image and display it, all right? Okay, so we have the URL image over here. So this will be our view that will be responsible for, well, taking in the URL, and downloading it, and displaying it. So this will be our URL image view. Now the first thing is that the whole idea or the responsibility of downloading the image is not for the URL image view, but we will add a brand new file and we will call it image downloader, whose responsibility will be to download the image. So image downloader is fine. There we go. Image downloader is nothing more than a class which will be responsible for downloading the image. So image downloader. And I'm going to make sure that that particular class is using the observable object because once the image is actually downloaded, we have to tell the URL image view that we have downloaded the image. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a property. I'm going to call it var, let's say downloaded data, which is actually the image, and it will be data. And we will initialize it with nil. Great. Now I can go ahead and create a function. I will call this function a download image function, which will take in the URL, and we're going to pass in a particular string. Using this URL, we can actually go ahead and create the actual URL object. So guard let image URL equals to URL and passing in the string as a URL. If it fails, then we can simply go ahead and throw some sort of a message. We can say invalid URL and that's it. Now that we have the URL, we can go ahead and download the image. So let's go ahead and download the image. We're going to say try data and then one of the overloads of data contains or takes in the contents of where we can pass in the image URL. There we go. Now you want to do this in the background because the image downloading or any kind of a network download that you do, it can take a while. So we can go ahead and say dispatch async, and we can go ahead and download the image in the background. There we go. Now, once the data or the image has been downloaded, we want to set the downloaded data to the downloaded data property declared on line number 13. And it has to be done on the main queue because we want this to be set on the main queue so that it can inform the URL image that it has been set. So I'm going to go ahead and say dispatch queue dot main dot async and now we can say self dot download the data equals to data. Now if you do go ahead and assign the data that you just received to the downloaded data property, nothing is really going to happen. So you make sure that you mark this with published, which means that whenever the property downloaded data gets changed, it's going to publish an event and now in the URL image view, we can actually use the image downloader to download the image and to get the image. 
So we're going to jump into URL image and we're going to go ahead and create the image. So it, this will be string. And I'm going to go ahead and create a private var image downloader, which will be an image downloader. And we will simply go ahead and assign it. Now, obviously, we don't really need this part because it can infer the type. So there we go, much simpler. And we are going to mark this with a property wrapper, which will be the observed object, which means that any time the, this object is going to publish a property, uh, publish an event, we are going to find that out and that is going to render our body again. Now, since we have created the URL string, we do need to pass in a URL. Now, I already have a URL. You can get the URL from anywhere you like. So I'm simply going to go ahead and pass in some sort of a default URL. For that, to make things a little bit easier, I'm going to go ahead and add a new SIF file and call it constants. The constants file will have simply a one static property, which will be image URL, and it will have some sort of a URL to the image. Now we can go ahead and use constants.imageURL, and we can uh, get that working. So now I can go ahead and say URL, and I can pass in constants dot image URL. Much simpler and much more compact instead of putting the whole URL over here. Let's now go back over here in our body. The other thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that the only way you are going to initialize the URL image is by passing in the URL, which is already done. But we will also make sure that when you initialize the URL image, the image downloader is going to go ahead and fetch the image. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and create a URL over here, the initializer. And I'm going to go ahead and assign the property URL right inside the initializer. And I can also say image downloader dot download image and pass in self.url. Let's go ahead and move this property on the top to a little bit organized. There we go. Okay, great. Now we can go back to our body. And now when the image downloader is going to download the image, it's going to call the download image and eventually it's going to set the downloaded data property to the data that you just downloaded. Whenever you're going to set the downloaded data property, it is going to publish an event since it is marked with published. And now it's going to render the body. Now when it's going to render the body, we can check over here that if let image data equals to self.imageDownloader.downloaded data. So we're going to unwrap this. If it is able to unwrap, then we can go ahead and create an image using the UI image. I'm going to pass in the data, which will be image data. And now we have to return something. So we're going to return a V stack or a vertical stack with the image, with this UI image and we can pass in the image over here. And we will simply return a resizable. So if we want to resize, we can do that. By the way, over here also, you know, instead of unwrapping it over here, you can do a if let over here, and that will also work. But first, let's go ahead and go with a simpler technique. All right, so else part, which is over here, if we are not able to get the image, now we do have to return a V stack because we are still returning a view, but it has to be of the same type. So let's go ahead and return a vertical stack. And in this vertical stack, we are going to go ahead and return an image. But this time, we are going to return an image, which will be placeholder. Now, this image we don't really have right now. So we are going to go ahead and get this image from somewhere and then return this. Let's go ahead and first build our application. Okay, build is good but we don't really have any image called placeholder. 
So let me see if we can find that image. All right. So I'm going to go to my preview content, preview assets, and I'm going to drop this image. And I can go ahead and also rename this image to placeholder. Perfect. And now we can go back to our URL image. So now we have hopefully the placeholder image also. All right. Now it's uh, time to give it a try. Go back to your content view and let's remove the text. We don't really want to display the text. Let's resume it first so we can see the preview. Okay, great. And now we can go ahead and add something. So I'm going to go ahead and add a vertical stack. I don't actually need a vertical stack, but I'm going to just add it. And then URL image. And now we can actually pass in the URL, which in this case will be constants dot image URL. And we can also set the frame. So frame, we can go ahead and set some sort of a width. And in this case, the width I'm going to use is UI screen dot main dot bounds dot width. And now you can set any height that you want. I'm going to go ahead and use UI screen dot main dot bounds dot height and divided by two, so half the height. That's great. Let's go ahead and play this so that we'll be able to download the image. When the image is not downloaded, then you will see the placeholder image, which you can see right now. But as soon as the image is downloaded, it would be replaced. There we go. You can see this is the image that we downloaded. Let's stop it again, start it again, and image is downloaded. Perfect. So it's working really good. One other thing that we can do is we can go to our URL image and we can also add some sort of a label. So right now we're using a V stack. So we can actually add something over here. So we can say text downloaded. And if you want, you can actually set the title or the font to be title. And over here, we can also set the text to be downloading. And again, you can set some sort of a title font. All right, perfect. With these changes in place, let's go back to our content view and try to run the application. Now you can see that it says downloading. And as soon as it is downloaded, it says downloaded also. Since we're using a V stack or a vertical stack, we can actually put different controls if we want to, like as you can see. And there you have it. It's a very basic example of creating your custom view, which is URL image, which takes in the URL and allows you to download an image using the data, uh, basically class, so that you can use contents of your contents off and pass in the URL and use the image downloader as an observable object to download the image. Now, obviously, this example does not take into account caching and all those kind of things. Uh, in the future, I will show you that how you can use caching and all those kind of cool stuff using a third party libraries. So I hope you really like it. Hey, if you want to learn more, then check out my course on Udemy. It's called Swift UI Declarative Interfaces for any Apple device. It is a 12 plus hour course and you can see this is the best seller on Udemy with more than 1300 students enrolled. Now, this course goes into great detail in building Swift UI applications, starting with building lists and navigation, jumping into the grids, understanding the state, and then it even dives into the MVVM design pattern and creating a complete coffee ordering applications using the MVVM design pattern, get, post, even creating the web service in Node Express. After that, it dives into the core data and also the integration with Core ML. You also learn how to create a Swift UI app that works on macOS, watchOS, and iOS. Now, if you want to take a look at this course, if you want to enroll in this course, but the best way would be to simply go to the YouTube and then check out the description. In the description of the YouTube video, you will find the link with the coupon already attached. Simply click on it and it will enroll you. Please use the coupon that is available in the description. If you use the coupon, that will be really, really appreciated. Thank you so much. And if you have any questions, please let me know.